Good evening, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true, the real scriptures. The authorized version of the scriptures. The King James scriptures. The true and real scriptures. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, to 1 John chapter 2. <clears throat> this video we are going to be looking at the word Antichrist. The word Antichrist appears five times within the scriptures, okay? In four verses, okay? It appears twice in one verse. Now, somewhere on my channel, I did a video addressing what is Antichrist. I could not tell you right offhand which one that is. That we discussed that. I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe you do. But uh, we're going to be looking at the word Antichrist, but in a little different perspective, okay? <clears throat> so, let's read this together. You are expected to follow me along in the scriptures. It's going to be important for you to do this, okay? Now, we are going to read verses 18 in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 22. Then we are going to read 1 John 4, verse 3, and 2 John 7. We're going to read them slowly. Now, the you're going to see the title of this video, but pay attention. Pay attention. Read this together with me. Read it out loud to yourself. Okay? Let's go. Verse 18. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist, singular, shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, too, whereby we know that it is the last time. Now very quickly, you see here that anti-Christ, a singular reference, a singular reference, and many anti-Christs, many anti-Christs, plural. We get that, right? Okay? Now, verse 22. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. 1 John 4, verse 3. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. And Second John 7, For many deceivers are entered into the world, who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an Antichrist, singular. Now, go back to 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. Let's look at this verse. Okay, look, don't look at me. Look at the scriptures. Seriously, come on. <clears throat> Little children, it is the last time. As ye have heard that, as ye have heard that, 
Antichrist shall come. Singular. Even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. Look outside your door. Antichrists. One that replaces and is against. To be Antichrist is number one, to replace Jesus Christ, God our Father. Number two is to be against Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Roman Catholicism seeks to replace Christ, and they are against Christ. Okay? Have plenty of videos on Catholicism if you're curious. Okay? Again, look at this verse. Look at the verse. That Antichrist shall come. Many Antichrists. What don't you see there? Verse 22. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is... Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Every rabid, lost Trinitarian who is not ignorant, ignorant is not knowing better, okay, denies the Father and the Son because remember, to the Trinitarian, Jesus is one of three persons, which is a spirit, soul, and body, that make one God. Uh, uh, the one in the middle died for me. <laughs> yeah, see, Trinitarians truly denieth the Father and the Son. How do they do that? Well, we, do, we don't deny the Father and the Son. Jesus Christ is God the Father. You deny the Father and the Son because they're one and the same. You see that? But look at it. He is Antichrist. <clears throat> First John 4, verse 3. What aren't you seeing? Granted, the title is going to give you away. But look at it again. Come on, look at this. Verse 3 in 1 John chapter 4. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Verse 18, little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist, where's the the? The, the Antichrist. Second John 7. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Okay? An antichrist. Where's the spirit of antichrist? Self-explanatory. Verse 22 in 1 John um, chapter 2. He is antichrist. Where's the? 1 John chapter 2 verse 18. As ye have heard that Antichrist wears the. Where is the? Show me. Show me. Where is the Antichrist? Brethren, th this was given on to me by a... Um, by a beloved sister, an auntie, who gave word unto a dear, dear, sweet brother and good friend, who
who showed this unto me. Now, very quickly, brethren, this is the authorized version of the scriptures. The in front of the definitive article. The. You put the in front of it, definitive article. The authorized version of the scriptures. The notepad. The laptop. Putting the in front of it is making, you know, in front of the definitive article. Okay? The portrait. Okay? You get me? You get me? <clears throat> Brethren, Church of the Living God, you and I, okay, we adhere to the, the authorized version of the scriptures by faith and practice. <clears throat> Personally, you will notice, if you've watched any of my videos for a, a little bit of time, I no longer use the term Christians when describing the Church of the Living God. Distinction. Catholics are Christians. Lutherans are Christians. Mormons are Christians. Okay? Methodists are Christians. Okay? Seeker sensitives are Christians. Okay? Those of us who are truly saved and born again are of the Church of the Living God. They called us Christians within the scriptures. The only one that you can argue with is when Peter said, if any suffer as a Christian. I could, I could almost picture when Peter was penning that. He's like, if, if anyone suffer as a Christian, I can just picture it, you know. The word Christian within scripture has a negative connotation to it. They were called, they were called Christians first. Get distinction? I love this one. <clears throat> Someone come up to you, right? You, they say to you, the word rapture is not in the King James Bible. Rapture is not in the Bible. And you know what you say to that? Hi. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Rapture is not in the Bible. You're right. Bravo. But in the authorized version of the scriptures, there is a resurrection. There is a catching away. You feel me? You feel me? Hmm? So, brethren, we adhere to the scriptures by faith and practice. What do you do with that? When you look at this, Antichrist, Antichrist's spirit of Antichrist, spirit of Antichrist is self-descriptive, an Antichrist spirit, spirit of Antichrist. That one is self-explanatory. Brethren, Antichrist is a description, not a title. Please show it to me. Go now to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 9. <clears throat> Daniel chapter 9. Come on, fingers work with me. Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 on to verse 27. 
Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 on to verse 27. <clears throat> we begin. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people, the Jews, and upon thy holy city, Jerusalem, to finish the transgression, and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision, and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy, most holy, like part. Know, therefore, and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, I said with verse 1, unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks, and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. This is referring to the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? <clears throat> and after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with the flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. Now pay attention. Pay attention. Get ready to hinge. Okay? Hinge this verse. Okay, let's read this. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. This has not happened yet. This is not between the Arabs and the Jews, which Jesuit Pawn Trump has been uh, messing around with. No, that no, this has yet to happen. Okay. Anyway, anyway. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the ob oblation to cease. Okay? Now note, he, in verse 27, and he, an individual, a person, spirit, soul, and body, okay, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he, individual, a person, spirit, soul, and body, shall cause the sacrifice and the ob oblation to see, cease. And for the overspreading, okay, <clears throat> and for the overspreading of abominations, the son of perdition, when he is revealed, you know, the man of sin, the son of perdition, when he is revealed, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even unto the consumption. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. And interesting to note in these modern Bible perversions, a lot of them replace desolate with desolator. Okay? Remember this verse. Remember this verse. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew, oh, there's a method to, the, to this, okay? So just go with me, chill, okay? Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 on to verse 19. We'll get the context here. <clears throat> and Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to shew him the buildings of the temple. <laughs> and Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone <laughs> upon another that shall not be thrown down. I'm sorry, that's for something else that uh, I'm working on. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples, who were all Jewish, they were all Jewish. Luke wasn't around during this particular time. He wasn't with Jesus personally. The disciples were all Jews. Okay? came unto him privately, saying, Tell us. Who's the us? The disciples. Who are the disciples? Jews. 
Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Talking about, obviously, the second coming. The Jews. Okay? Let's continue. <clears throat> and Jesus answered and said unto them, <clears throat> Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. I am Christ. Is anyone, If anyone right now walking around saying, Hi, I'm Jesus Christ, um, he would probably be shot. Christ, the word Christ means anointed. Okay? The Christ, anointed or anointed one. Okay? That's why you really got to be careful about people who say they have an anointed ministry. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ. An anointed one? Fact check me on that. You don't believe me about the, about the word Christ. Go ahead. I double dog there you. Let's continue. And shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Is that not happening today? See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is no yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and fake pestilences, <clears throat> beg your pardon, and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Newsflash, earthquakes have increased. What, you didn't hear about that on fake news? Oh, excuse me, Fox News or Catholic News Network? Huh? Or Catholic Band or whatever that thing is? Or that junk by Microsoft? What, they don't, they don't talk about that? No, no, no. Remember, the news media is the one keeping the uh, pandemic alive, okay? Because there ain't one. Verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offered, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Verse 5, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. In Luke chapter 1 or 2, the old man who uh, picked up Jesus said, Now let me, be, let me be taken, because I have seen the Lord's Christ, the Lord's anointed one, Jesus Christ, God the Father, God manifests in the flesh, okay? Verse 11, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Right here. Dispensational difference shows you to whom he is speaking this about and unto the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. How do you know? But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Today, when you are truly saved and born again, you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, with a broken and contrite spirit. Broken of yourself. You believe on what he did for you on that cross, and you humble yourself and call upon the name of the Lord. And once you are saved, ye are sealed until the day of redemption. You are sealed with the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? Meaning, today, in this dispensation, 
the time of the Gentiles, you're eternally secure. You don't have to endure to the end to be saved of anything. You're going to heaven. Okay? This is a dispensational difference. Understand? Because Matthew ch chapter 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, which the Church of the Living God will not be here for. All you Christians, just believe, you heretics, all you guys will be here <laughs> bending down to the son of perdition. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my dear friend in Canada, I wonder if you're going to be one of the ones who will literally uh, plant your lips upon the son of perdition's buttocks. I beg your pardon, I had to say that. Let's continue. <clears throat> and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for, all, for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. When ye, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, Stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Look at verse 15. Look at verse 15. When ye, plural, ye is plural, therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Hold your place. Go back to Daniel chapter 9. Remember verse 27? And he, nine, uh, Daniel 9 verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consumption, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Back to Matthew 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand, right there, stand in the holy place. Stand. Okay, can the acts of making the sacrifice and oblation to cease, can they stand as a he? No. No. And in Daniel chapter 27, he, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. Talking about a person, spirit, soul, and body. Okay. Matthew chapter 15, uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation. The abomination of desolation. What is that? He shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. 
even unto the consumption, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Verse 15 in Matthew chapter 24 again. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, okay, stand in the holy place, making reference to a person, spirit, soul, and body. Whoso readeth understand. Now, abomination of desolation is what he is going to be committing. Yes, we know that. But look where it says, comma, after Daniel the prophet, comma, stand in the holy place. Tell me something. Doth it look like unto thee that our Lord Jesus Christ is referring to this person, spirit, soul, and body, as the abomination of desolation? Wait. Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13, verses 9 on to verse 20. Verses 9 on to verse 20. Mark chapter 13, verses 9 on to verse 20. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony, testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son. And the children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Again, dispensational difference. Today, the time of the Gentiles, you're saved and born again of the church of the living God, you're going to heaven. You don't have to endure to the end to be saved. You're saved. If you were to die right now, you would be absent from the body, present with the Lord. Okay? Dispensational difference here. Very important to get that. But let's continue. <clears throat> but when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, comma, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand, and let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. And let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. And let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. But woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. For in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. Look at verse 14. But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation, comma, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, refers to him as an it, standing where it ought not, where, uh, then let him that readeth understand, then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Did you hold your place in Matthew chapter 24? Good, because I didn't. Matthew chapter 24, verse 15, okay? Okay? When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, comma, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, comma, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. 
Mark chapter 13, verse 14. But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, comma, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand. Then let them that be in Judea flee, into, flee to the mountains. Now, this man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to bring in the desolation, uh, the, um, what is it, the abomination of desolation. But, when we see here, standing where it ought not, in Mark chapter 13, verse 14, and in Matthew chapter 25, verse 15, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, comma, stand in the holy place. Brethren, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is referring to this individual as the abomination of desolation. He, it is also descriptive of what he will be doing. But when you compare those two verses, he's referring to the man of sin, the son of perdition. And what's interesting to note about this the abomination of desolation. What's very interesting to note about this is, tell me, was this before or after the crucifixion? You know that already. It was before the crucifixion. What does that mean? This was doctrinally in the Old Testament. The New Testament comes in with the death of the testator. Read Hebrews chapter 9 sometime and you'll see that. Okay? The New Testament did not begin with the birth of Jesus Christ, God the Father, God manifest in the flesh. No. It began with the death of the testator. Doctrinally, the law was still binding. Doctrinally, the law is still binding for salvation, I should say, excuse me. Doctrinally, this was the Old Testament. Under the law, under the dispensation of the law. Hence, under the dispensation of the law, given from God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ himself, <clears throat> but when ye shall see the abomination of desolation, Spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand where it ought not. Let him that readeth understand. And in Matthew 24, verse 15, where when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Daniel, again, chapter 9. Verse 27, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. He shall make it desolate even until the consumption, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, refers to the man of sin, the son of perdition, in the Old Testament under the law as the abomination of desolation, the man of sin. Okay? Under the law. For the crucifixion in a different dispensation. Ah, now we're, don't, now we're going there. Okay, now we're going there. Now we're going there. Where are we going there, friends? For those of you who do not know, why? For those of you who do not know, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Ah! -ha! <laughs> Alrighty, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 12. 
2 Thessalonians chapter 1, uh, chapter 2, verses 1 and verse 12. Don't worry, I'll get it right. Now, this is specific doctrine for us today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Okay? This is doctrine for us. The Pauline epistles exclusively are for all of us in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, unto the Jew first, also to the Greek. Okay? That's going to be kind of expounded on in a couple other videos coming. But, okay? This is for us. This is this dispensation, which is coming to an end, dear friend. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, <clears throat> verses 1 on to verse 12. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, already happening, unlike what that Farag guy says, Ugh, don't let's, never mind, never mind, never mind. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, already happening, and that man of sin be revealed, descriptive, the son of perdition. That man of sin, descriptive, be revealed. The, definit, uh, the, in front of the definitive article, son of perdition. I wish I could tell you what video uh, was done where we go into this about Judas and whatnot. I wish I could. I can't remember offhand. But we've addressed this before in a uh, video before. I can't remember which one. I'm sorry. But, okay, the son of perdition. Okay, very quickly, John, hold your place there. We're still going to read John chapter 17. John chapter 17, verse 12. Just one verse. John chapter 17, verse 12. John chapter 17, verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, referring to Judas, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Judas was given a SOP, SOP, Son of Perdition. Judas was a Jew. A, um, uh, where um, Jesus says, Friend, betrayest thou, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? Betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? Son of Perdition. Back to Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. And that man of sin be revealed, descriptive, the son of perdition. The son of perdition, the beast, is going to be Jewish. At the very least, a higher half breed. Okay? That there's no way around that. Okay? The Antichrist is going to be of Jewish origin. Hence, the son of perdition betrayed the son of man with a kiss. He's going to be a Jew, going to betray his own people. Get it? Get it? Son of perdition? Get it? Okay, let's continue. Now remember what we've looked at so far? Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God 
sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. What do we look at in Daniel chapter 9? Shewing himself that he is God. The abomination of desolation. Under the law. The man of sin, descriptive, son of perdition. Going to go into the temple and declare himself to be God. He's anti-Christ. Show me. We've already looked. Show me the Antichrist in Scripture. He's Antichrist, of course. A description. But he's the son of perdition. From verse 5, Remember ye not that, when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be re revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who will now letteth, only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. Gotta do this. Only he, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Lord is that Spirit, okay? Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The Holy Ghost is omnipresent. The he be taken out of the way is the church of the living God. We are part of his flesh, part of his bones. Okay, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Okay, we get caught up. Okay, the church of the living God get caught up. We're the ones because we have God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, dwelling within us. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, working through us, in us, is withholding, letting the Son of Perdition until we be taken out of the way. Then the Son of Perdition is going to be revealed. Okay, let's continue. And then shall that, capital W, wicked, be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That wicked, capital W, descriptive. Absolutely, the son of perdition is that wicked. Absolutely. Absolutely. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and sign and lying wonders. Remember that capital W there. Wicked. Remember there are seven references to the W uh, capital W word within the authorized version of the scriptures? That wicked, capital W? Even him whose, working, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and sign and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So, what do we see? In this dispensation, the desolation, the abomination of desolation, as referred to as our Lord by our Lord Jesus Christ, under the law, in a different dispensation, referring to this man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? One and the same. Abomination of desolation under the law. Time of the Gentiles. The man of sin, son of perdition. That's who's coming. But what are they going to know him as when he's finally revealed? Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. 
Revelation chapter 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. <clears throat> and they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? The beast. Okay? The beast. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, the rebuilt temple, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Power was given him. <coughs> and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. I beg your pardon, excuse me. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Now, before we read, um, the beast, the beast, son of perdition, abomination of desolation, the beast, who is Antichrist. He is Antichrist. Absolutely. Yes, he is. He is Antichrist. The son of perdition. Man of sin, son of perdition. The abomination of desolation. Abomination of desolation. And incidentally, this is the time of Jacob's trouble. And in Revelation chapter 4, come up hither, is the catching away of the church of the living God. The resurrection of the church of the living God. Okay? But we, what do we see so far? Look at verse 2. <clears throat> and the dragon gave him his power. Okay? You see that? The dragon gave him his power. Who was this? Verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. So you have the, the beast and the dragon. Let's read from uh, verse 11 on to the close of the chapter now. And I beheld another beast. Coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast. The first beast. Who is Antichrist? Son of perdition. Whose deadly wound was healed. Hold your place. Look at verse 2 again. Okay? Look at verse 2 again. 
and we will read on to verse 4. Hold your place, okay? And the beast, the beast, the beast, who is Antichrist? Yes, who is Antichrist? Yes. Which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon. And who is the dragon, class? Huh? Yeah. Satan, that old devil. Yes, let's continue, okay? And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of the one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. Maybe raised from the dead. Oh, you you get what I'm what I'm trying to get across to you, aren't you, my uh, brothers and sisters of the Church of the Living God? You get it, don't you? Yeah, you get it. Let's continue. Those of you who don't, let's continue. Okay. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Now go back to pick up right here from verse 13. Uh, let's read verse 12 again. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Lying signs and wonders. This is the false prophet. Second beast, pointing to the first beast who has his authority from the dragon. And all people are worshiping the dragon. Are, what does it say there? Uh, in verse 4, and they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast. So, there's your trinity right there, buddy. The dragon, Satan, the beast, and the false prophet to what he is, the false prophet, which he is called later within the book of Revelation. Okay? Okay? The false prophet. He's named later. Okay? Here's your trinity. The one in the middle, the beast, right? Got a wound, maybe died and rose again. Satan is a counterfeit. You read in Exodus that when, for example, when um, uh, who was it? Moses threw his staff down and it became a serpent. The magicians did the same thing also. Okay, with frogs, same things also. And also with the blood on the ground, they did the same thing also, the magicians did. But when it came to the lice, the magicians couldn't copy that. They couldn't imitate that. They couldn't counterfeit that. So, hmm. see, God is spirit, soul, and body. One God. But see, Roman Catholicism has been teaching from its inception one God of three persons. And right here, the dragon, the beast, the false prophet. There's your trinity. And those of you who are going to be left behind you're going to see that trinity. <laughs> yeah.
Yes. Yes. And the wounded head, you know, rise again. See, Roman Catholicism's teaching of the satanic trinity of three persons making one God is going to be brought to fruition right here. Yeah, false prophet is going to be pointing to the beast and everyone's going to be worshiping the dragon, who's going to uh, worship the dragon, which gave power onto the beast, and they worship the beast. There's your satanic father, son, and holy ghost, you Trinitarians. And the man of sin, son of perdition, is named the beast. In this dispensation, the time of Jacob's trouble. So yeah. 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 Hey, you, you Trinitarians? Bravo. Here. Revelation chapter 13. There's your trinity. <laughs> There's your trinity. And who is it? It's all Satan. Let's continue. Verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Boy, there are so a lot of pictures of this Roman Catholic Jesus around nowadays, ain't they? Ain't they? Well, you think it's bad now. You wait. If you don't get saved now and escape this time that's coming, Verse 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Six six six. www. What did we see here? The beast. The beast. He's referred to as the beast. And when you look in Revelation chapter 6, <clears throat> Revelation chapter 6, And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown, singular crown, was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now see, here in my little note that I wrote to myself, I have Antichrist. He is Antichrist, but he's not referred to as the Antichrist, the son of perdition. This is the son of perdition. He is Antichrist, absolutely. But he is not the Antichrist. The, hey, Show me the Antichrist in the author in the authorized version of the scriptures. What are you gonna do with that? What are you gonna do with that? Hmm? He's referred to as the beast here in the book of Revelation. The dragon, the beast. 
the false prophet. There's your trinity, Catholics. And the beast, you know, Satan is counterfeit. Counterfeits everything. I'll bet you during the time of Jacob's trouble, this beast, one of three gods that make one, <laughs> is um, going to be wounded like as if you were dead and rise again probably the third day. Yeah. So, Church of the Living God, what do you do with this? Hmm? What do you do with this? Like I said, I don't correct this. This corrects me. What about you? You and I, I'm, I'm talking to the Church of the Living God right now. You and I, brother, sister, we need to come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Okay? We're, sh shut up, you heretics. Okay? Just shut up, go away. Okay? You say born again, you're going to heaven. End of story. But we need to be distinct. We need to be separate. There needs to be distinction. Especially when Roman Catholicism, Mystery Babylon, is bringing everybody together like at the Tower of Babel. Yeah. We need to be separate. Distinct. Separate than other than. This book, the scriptures, correct me. I don't correct it. The Antichrist is not in scripture. Abomination of desolation is, under the law, the man of sin, descriptive, the son of perdition, for us today, during this dispensation, and he will be known as the beast, whatever his name will be, the beast, during the time of Jacob's trouble. The son of perdition. And like I said, a, um, a beloved sister, an auntie, excuse me, an auntie, gave word to a dear beloved brother and friend and brought this up to me and what, what do you do with that? What do you do with it? I don't change this, this changes me. From hence. I will refer to the man of sin as the son of perdition. He is Antichrist. Yes, he is. Show me the Antichrist. Show it to me. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? And hey, I've, I've said the Antichrist. That's the Antichrist. I've said it quite a bit. Quite a bit. A lot. A lot of you do. Right? You do. Come on. Because there are antichrists out there. And you can you'll meet someone who is antichrist. And antichrist. Spirit of Antichrist. <laughs> need, need I say anything about that? Okay. He is an Antichrist. Antichrist. Yes. 
but not the Antichrist. That's the man of sin. The man of sin. The son of perdition. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. And, um, dear sister, uh, dear auntie, our sister, and my beloved brother, my friend, my dear friend, thank you. Church of the living God, brethren, chew on this for a little bit. This is the standard, right? Right? This changes you. You don't change it, right? What do you do? Um, very quickly, brethren, please keep Brother Matthew Melanson in your prayers. It's getting worse. Please continue to pray for um, Brother Aaron. Brother Aaron Deeren, please pray for Brother Jeff Jones. Please pray for Brother Matthew Hroon. Please. Um, pray for one another. Pray for one another. Pray for Sister Emma. Pray for those, your brothers and sisters. Pray for one another. Pray for one another. Don't forget to pray for one another. From uh, Brother um, Divisive Inerrantist, I actually said it right. Please continue to pray for him. Just pray for one another right now, brethren. So many people right now, hurting in many ways of the Church of the Living God. Pray for one another. There are going to be two videos coming here very soon. Maybe tomorrow, if not tomorrow, definitely Friday. Um, I was given some notes to go over by a beloved brother, and um, just another like wow <laughs> kind of thing. Um, still kind of finalizing a little of it. Where I'm still praying over it. Uh, these two videos, um, but they will be coming either tomorrow, if not tomorrow, Friday, because uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be really good. So keep an eye out for that. Um, anyway, um, also too, very quickly, bear, uh, bear with me one second. Um, right now, we both, my wife and I, Sue, um, please continue to pray for us. And thank you for all of you who do pray for us. And thank you to every single one of you. Thank you. You know who you are. Um, we are learning to adjust to one another in a 24-7 uh, uh, kind of thing. Because remember, my wife used to work, okay? She used to go out in the morning. I lost my job <laughs> because of issues. <laughs> Not conformity. But anyway, um, so we're home together now. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, the Lord um, sends us out tracting together. Uh, today we went out tracting um, to a town called Crystal Lake, and um, we uh, we did some. We, <laughs> your sister, my wife, she is a prolific track tractor. <laughs> she um, pretty brilliant with it, to be honest with you, but. Um, we have been slowly learning to adjust to one another and, um, you know, to live with one another 
as husband and wife, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There are those of you out there who have um, contacted me and I have not contacted you back. Please forgive me for this. Um, like I said, um, things are changing. <laughs> um, videos are probably now going to be done later in the daytime where before uh, the Lord was having me do them right in the morning. Uh, that might still happen, but primarily it's going to be happening now later toward the evenings because um, I have a wife to care for. And we get busy with tracting. Help me, you know, with tracting. We do a lot, of, we do tracting like crazy. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. But um, just wanted to mention that. So if you have contacted me and I have not responded to you, please do understand things have been changing a little bit. So um, that is. That is why I have not responded to some of you who have contacted me, okay? I'm not being, ignoring you or anything like that. I'm just telling you. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, we will see you in the next video, either tomorrow or Friday. But uh, these two are coming. So, I love you. May our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be magnified. Thank you so much for watching if you do. Bye-bye.